Okay, this is just a quick video on shaders in RetroPie. This is RetroPie 2.3, it came out in July 2014, and it's an emulator for all those retro systems like Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, N64, everything like that from the 80s and the mid 90s. So you can see here running is Super Mario World on the SNES emulator, which is using RetroArch, and you can see, especially around Mario's head and around the edges of the um, Yoshi, you can see really pixelated, sharp edges, um, sort of blown up, and doesn't look like the retro experience on CRTs at all. It's sort of quite harsh, and that's because this is on a HD TV. It's an LCD, 720p, and um, and it, it's just not the same experience. But there is the facility in RetroPie to use shaders, and shaders apply a sort of overlay to the image to soften it up, or to blur it a bit, or to add any effect you want to try and get um, a better viewing experience. And I'll run through some examples of how to change those shaders to get a, a better view. Now in RetroPie setup, Raspbian, um, the sort of Linux back end of all this, there is a boot directory with a config.txt file in, and in that you can set different outputs, 240p, 480p, to try and um, get a different view. But that isn't really appropriate with this sort of emulation on the software. It doesn't really change the fact that when it loads up on the 720p TV, it looks like this. So shaders uh, look like the best option for it. If you had an original hardware um, and you hook that up, then perhaps um, outputting it in a different res might do something differently, maybe. Or this is where things like the XRGB really kick in and you can use devices to properly upscale to this sort of TV rather than it just being software alone. Anyway, okay here, let's have a look at how to apply shaders to this. Now I'm going to start in the emulation station interface which is where most of the RetroPie users would end up. It auto boots into this interface so you can navigate through and choose what system you're going to emulate. But um, some of the configuration you're going to need a command line or use terminal. And to get there, if you hit Alt F4 in this interface, it should drop out that and get into the terminal interface. If the screen goes black, you can hit Alt F2 to get a different view up and then back to Alt F1. I don't know quite why it does that, but that seems to get around the problem. Or quite often it'll just end up on this screen anyway, so it's not a problem. Um, you've just got to wait a minute for it to drop out of that emulated mode. There, there we go, we've got the command prompt and from there you can get to the areas that you need to, to change the configuration. So the first bit is to see what directory we're in, pwd, okay so I'm currently in um, the directory I was working in before but I'll just go back to the root so you can see what it's looking like. So the root of the Raspberry Pi could be accessed, you just type cd forward slash, space forward slash, and then ls for list, got a load of directories. And the directory we want is the apt, so we're going apt, cd space apt, ls, and then we've got a directory called retro pi, change into the retro pi directory, and inside there we've got a few more directories. Now if we go in the emulators directory, you can see the shaders that have come with this installation of retro pi. So that's cd emulators, um, list that directory in there. These are the list of the emulators, obviously, and the one we're interested in is Retro Arch. CD into Retro Arch. In Retro Arch, you've got the shader directory. That's where they live. <coughs> if we list out that, you can see there's about 50 or so um, different shaders, and these are what Retro Arch will use to apply a different graphical view. So Whilst we've got the list there, you can see there's one called snes.glslp, and that would be the one we'd we'll try out in this example, and it should make the graphics look uh, a bit more retro. Okay, so now we know where they are. I'm going to go back a directory um, to RetroArch, back again to emulators, and back once more to RetroPy. In there, I'm going to CD into configs, and there, in configs, it's a configuration file for those systems. And the one we're going to do is SNES, CD SNES, lifts that one. There's one file in there, retroarch.cfg, and we're going to edit it. And to edit it, we're going to type sudo nano retroarch.cfg. 
there it is. So you've got an option video smooth equals false, but you don't use that if you're not using shaders, so you keep that false. And down here is the video shader we're going to use with the full path of where it lives. You can set a master path that this refers to, so you just set the file name, but it's often easier just to specify the full one. And here I um, renamed it test, so you could see earlier what it looks like without using shaders. And now if we change that to snares, which was a valid shader we saw earlier, we'll save that with Ctrl-O, write that out to the file. It says at the bottom what file name do you want to use. Yep, that's fine. Press Enter. And then exit out of this with Control x And to get back into the interface, you type emulation station. And hit Enter. OK, it's fired back up. And already you can see that it's a lot softer. There's The jagged edge is really tailed off there. It's sort of blurred in much better, um, a lot closer to what you'd see on a CRT. It's not perfect, it's never going to be perfect without using a CRT, but considering this is a high def TV, that example is a lot better. And as you saw earlier, there's loads of different shaders to try to get a slightly different effect, maybe some with more prominent scan lines or similar shader, but um, it's a much better experience using these shaders. And you might find that one shader is better for one system and another shader is better for Mega Drive or NES. So you can change those as you want. And uh, that's how you do it. A lot easier.